Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Philadelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so happy for your love and your support. And of course, tonight, um, we are going to look at a very wonderful and interesting topic, Christian dating. We want to discuss this evening what this looks like in the 21st century. We want to look, look at what it looks like in terms of in a practical way in the life and experience of many many christians when should we start dating um you know what are some of the shaky reasons why people date um, when um when in a person's life a person should start to consider thinking about the whole process of dating what is dating in fact you know many individuals have all different kind of views surrounding that um what a healthy dating experience looks like we want to explore some of these questions and and see if we can you know give some answers based on our interaction this evening um i'm jermaine parker and this evening i have with me some wonderful guests we have sister davina garden and of course she's a member here at the philadelphia seventh day adventist church and of course um she is an avid reader and of course she she enjoys discussing topics um, like this based on the knowledge and the experiences that you know she has in her life and she's willing to share so that others can be impacted positively accordingly. We also have a couple in our midst um, and this evening, um, Garrett Johns and his wife, Alana Johns, right? And of course, they have a wealth of knowledge as it relates to this. I'm not putting any pressure on you guys. You know, but I, I think that your story is, is very insightful and very inspiring. And I know that individuals can be blessed um, this evening. But just before we go into our discussion, I'm going to ask um, Sister Gordon at this time to engage us in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Okay, Ms. Kamp, Pastor and Father, one thank you for another day. One thank you for all the blessings that you've given to us. As we um, proceed on this discussion, I pray that it will be helpful to somebody who is embarking on this stage in their life i hope that you will continue to bless this program and to bless all our listeners these are mentioned mercies i pray amen amen thank you very much all right all right christian dating that's what we're going to focus on because we know that dating exists outside of the world but we want to speak about this in the context of you know Christ, um, christianity right the different individuals who need to be a part of you know this particular um, life experience um, for christian because it's necessary it's a necessary topic for us to explore I, I i believe all right so as we start our conversation let us define what is dating let us start right there because that piece is absolutely important for us to to look into so go ahead and let us know Okay, I'll start first. <laughs> so um, uh, dating, I believe, is um, two persons of the opposite sex um, getting to know each other with the intention of um, a long-term commitment and marriage. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that sounds good. Anybody else? Um, it's, it's just <laughs> the, the process of you know finding a, a life partner. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. Someone you want to spend the rest of your life with. Yeah, a life partner. Okay, so there should be um, that particular intention. Yes, comes there, it should be, dating mm -hmm. should be with intent. Yeah. It shouldn't just be, you know, oh, I'm going to date this person and that person and that person. Mm -hmm. It should be with the intent to find your life partner. Yeah, yeah, and I like that. And the reason why I like that because, you know, my definition, my working definition, of course, there are several definitions out there, but all of us, because we are thinking beings, we have our individual positions when it, when, when it comes on to different topics, right? For me, it is the process of gathering information about a potential spouse, right? Gathering information. And of course, what does that look like in, in, a, in a practical sense? You know, gathering information, right? Um, about an individual, gathering information about the person's personality, um, gathering information about how the person handles different situations of life, what the kind of relationship that the person has with different individuals, you know, you know, and, and, and different important information that can influence me to actually make a decision going forward, right? Um, so that, that, that's my position on that. And of course, I, I, 
I, I think that, you know, as you mentioned, Garrett, it has to be a situation where, you know, we are intentional about going to the altar, right? It has to be that, right? Um, all right, so in light of that definition, I think that this is something, the question I'm going to ask now is something that many individuals are definitely un uncomfortable about, uh, and, and many individuals are confused concerning the whole idea what our, our concept of the stages of dating can we explore that what are you know what are the stages of dating anybody ali you want to <laughs> i guess like the first stage is more of like the fantasy stage or mm -hmm. or as we call it the honeymoon stage where we're looking to see who we want to date yeah um for example i'll use us as, as fantasy stage yes so i i actually was looking around. I didn't go to Scarborough at the time. Mm -hmm. I was looking. I was going to Toronto East. I was going, came here a couple of times yeah. to Philadelphia. Okay. <laughs> and then I, I was basically church hopping. Wow. Right? Looking to find somebody that I can spend the rest of my life with. And I, I didn't notice Garrett. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Uh, my mom actually <laughs> pointed him out to me. And I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. Wow. My first assumption was he has too many girls around him. Around him? Yeah. Okay. Like he was singing on the praise team. Even after church, I would notice that he would. But I didn't know that majority of his friends were girls. That was an assumption I made. Mm -hmm. But getting to know him from other people in the church, mm -hmm. other church members, I asked. Mm -hmm. And I feel like asking questions in this stage and getting to know who that person is, but not really tying myself to him because i came oh. to philly and i saw other men at, young men at philly and i was mm -hmm. like oh. potential men yeah. yeah and i was like oh for example i would go to simone and say simone you know that young man that's always in the booth Whoa. what is what is he like <laughs> like what what are the what, ones in the booth <laughs> yeah <laughs> like what what are they single are they looking what are they like outside mm -hmm. of church so that first stage is kind of like going around and trying to find out what that potential person mm -hmm. has that you you want in a relationship not only that but back to what davina was saying about the group dating yeah group I, dating what is that yes T uh, tell us about that yeah you mm -hmm. want to take this one davina yeah go ahead davina <laughs> yes so i think um it's critical to um kind of participate in group dating and group dating is basically where you have like a potential couple together with probably other couples or just friends in general. And you talk about yeah. information gathering, and I think group dating is a prime, you know, environment. For that. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There you're able to see your potential partner um, exchange or interact with other personalities. How does he deal with an overly friendly, overly touchy friend or something like that? Mm -hmm. You know, just to see him um, engage with like older people, younger people, I think that's important because people can sometimes, yeah. um, mm -hmm. when it's just you two um, together, they can sometimes, you know, um, like hide or pretend or not being themselves, so to speak, um, when it's just the two of you, but just seeing them with other people give you a chance to really assess how they are and how they will interact with other people. Yeah, definitely. Go ahead. You, yeah. With the group dating setting, you know, you mentioned, you know, people will not be themselves sometimes when it's one on one you know most time when yes. you're one on one with someone you're trying to be mm -hmm. you're trying impress. to impress you're trying to be perfect that's okay, is that okay too you you're know? trying to be perfect <laughs> which sometimes nothing is wrong with that but you also need to see that person out of their comfort zone mm -hmm. and um when you're in a group setting you get to realize um how this person reacts you know like Davina said, with, with other people. Yeah. How do they react? Very important, um, yeah. If, you know, conflict, conflict or something like that, you know. So the group setting kind of frees them up in a sense, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It kind of like breaks the ice. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Definitely, because the, the, the truth is when a person knows that this person has a certain kind of intention in terms of relationship towards, you know, you know towards them, they tend to start to put on things that, you know, that blur or may distort your understanding of who they are in the truest sense, yes. so to speak. I kind of want to avoid that. So, 
so you, basically we are saying that group dating um, is is a is an ideal way for individuals, you know, to approach this thing, right? In terms of the stages. So so what we're so what we are basically hearing is is the whole concept of you know the first part of the whole process of dating is friendship. That's what we are hearing. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to elaborate some more on that? Why, why? Why? Tell me if this makes sense. You know, they need to be a friend with a person before you engage in full blown dating. What does that look like? You know, um, does it really make sense? Because you know, people have different perspective where this is concerned. Some people believe that um, you should engage in dating, so to speak, and then develop friendship. Or should a friendship? What what are we where, where that is concerned? Are we are we where that is concerned? I feel like mm -hmm. having that friendship before you go into that dating phase, as we supposedly yeah. speak of, I would know him better mm -hmm. as a friend because that 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 barrier is not up yet. Yeah, like he's not putting on a show. Yeah, to so try to and speak. impress me, right? Building that friendship gets me to gets me to know him better, and as marriages, it's a lifelong friendship, mm -hmm. right? It's not just to say I that, like that yeah that I am with him because he's cute, he's good looking, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'm with him for not only the outward but the inward um, appearances as well. Getting to know how he is. Um, helps me to determine how our relationship will be once we start dating. Yeah. So if I see that, for example, it goes back to the whole opening the door thing. Yeah. Right. If I see he's very polite as a friend, he doesn't he doesn't put down anybody. He's always willing to help. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of stuff that I want to see in my future spouse. Right. Um. Also, in terms of friendship, I see it as that stepping stone for making my relationship better. Yeah, definitely. That makes sense. Yeah, go um, ahead. I just want to go about a little bit. So, uh, we talk about dating. I think you first you have to prepare. You said we talk about what you're looking for in your potential spouse, spouse and then yeah. you went looking for that. But um, a key part is also attraction. So you talk about physical attractiveness. Am I, you know, liking this person? Is this person liking physical me? physical, physical attraction? Yeah, I just want physical. to make sure that that is being said <laughs> yeah. clearly. Yeah. Physical attraction. Physical attraction. Yeah. 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 Expand on that. Yeah. Then, um, so definitely, <laughs> things go a little bit smoother if you like what you see. <laughs> like people are visual, whether we want to believe it or not. Right, and then next we look at the friendship situation um, that you mentioned. So for me, that's like the second stage, if yeah. you want to say, and that's where you get to know like the character and how the person is. So the stages of dating, you are saying that um, attraction, yeah, and then friendship, yeah. Okay, for even me. though sometimes for for you, okay, <laughs> even though sometimes it is a friendship and and the, the friendship results in attraction. We're talking about not just physical attraction, but in terms of attraction, spirituality, personality, and otherwise, right? So, so that's what we are hearing. But, but the point is that the first stage of dating should be friendship, right? Just before you speak, Garrett or um, Alana, I am heavily influenced by another Christian author um, by the name of Nancy Van Pelt, right? And she says that in her definition of dating, she uses the word friendship. She says here, um, that dating is a special kind of friendship, right, between two persons of the opposite sex that may lead to love, courtship, and marriage, right? And she goes on to elaborate on the importance of having friendship before you start to go into the whole process of dating or full-fledged dating. Because, in fact, she says that dating has three major stages, right? Right? She talks about, um, you know, casual, talk about casual, special, and steady dating. And of course, and I think that earlier when we were, before we start this show, uh, this program, um, you were elaborating on some of these stages. I was, um, wanted to go back to um, where Davina mentioned physical attraction. You know, um, a lot of time people try to say, you know, attraction is, 
not everything, which is true, but it's important. Yeah. It is important. It's something that is important because you're not just going to see someone from a distance and think, oh, I want to date that person. Mm -hmm. You're going to see them and be like, oh, I like what I see. Yeah. I want to know if, you know, what that person is like. Mm -hmm. um, will we be suitable for each other? Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, the process begins to try to get to know that person. Yeah. So physical attraction is very much important. And um, friendship. Friendship also is 100% important too because if you and your spouse or you and the person you're dating doesn't become friends, then it's a problem in the long run. Because yeah, what, what do you mean by problem in the long run? Tell, tell us about that. All yeah. right. So mm -hmm. if, if Alana and I you know, weren't friends, before, before, mm -hmm. then when we start dating, or even say we go through all of that and even get into marriage. No, you are no married. We are no yeah, married. Yeah. <laughs> we are no married. But I'm just saying, in general, if if we get married and we're not friends, mm -hmm. that's where problem arise because you know we're not gonna see things eye to eye, which is okay. Like we're not always gonna see things eye to eye, but. If you're not friends, you're not going to try to want to work things out. You're not going to try to want to, you know, yeah. find a solution. Yeah. So, you know, if 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 you're always bumping heads, then that's yeah. a problem, right? Couples, yeah. um, couples who are friends tend to resolve issues differently or better, yeah. in, in, in my perspective, right? Um, it, it, when I'm counseling um, <laughs> individuals, especially preparing for marriage, one of the fundamental questions that I always ask, do you like her or do you like, uh, uh, or my, my ask the guy, uh, my, my ask the, guy, the girl, do you like him? And person's like, wondering why I'm asking such a question. Because we need to understand that when it comes on to the context of marriage relationship, you know, it's not about love alone. Right, because some person will come and say, "Hey, you know, so we love each other and all of that." Yes, I understand that. But do you like the person? Because the truth is, you can <laughs> you can love somebody and not like them. You can love somebody and not like them, right? Because love, in the context of what we know love to be from a biblical perspective, is you know you're, you're acting based on principles and not necessarily feeling. Mm -hmm. But when you like somebody. You, you know, we're talking about the personality traits and qualities that you have experienced in the context of that particular relationship. And, 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 and most of the time, that is the experience of individuals while they are friends, mm -hmm. right? Because you like each other because you are friends in the context that you share certain values, you share certain beliefs, you share certain perspective, and so forth and so on. Yes. And if and if you don't like your partner, <laughs> you're not gonna wanna like to be around your partner. Oh mercy! You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that is important. You don't want to go home. You don't want to go home, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. why it's very important to have that friendship, that relationship yeah. before yeah. you know you get deep down into it. Yeah. Anything else? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, for mm -hmm. me too, I support that friendship is a. Uh, like a very good um, foundation, I think your spouse or your husband, your partner should be your best friend. Um, and I, and we talk about um, <laughs> <laughs> they knock fifty. <laughs> <laughs> because I think friends resolve issues and relate to each other um, in almost like a constant way, a consistent way. Yeah. So yes, issues may re um, come up, but then you know that's a person you're always going to go back to. Um, there's a saying like, um, you know, f a friendship is like closer than a brother, uh, you know, or better than pocket money kind yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. this um, relationship you have as with your friend where you know that that person like has your back, right? And mm -hmm. that and that thing, that person is always there for you. So for sure, I think that's a good basis um, for yeah. like a exposure. So, so in terms of the process, so, so we're hearing that friendship, no, the attraction, friendship. Right then, um, dating in the context of dating, you have what is called casual dating. Then you have what is called special dating, and then you have steady dating. Right after that experience, then you go into what is called engagement and eventual, eventually marriage. 
that, that's what we are saying, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and of course, do, just to kind of be, um, just make the distinction about casual dating, according to Nancy Van, Van Pelt, casual dating is is also in the context of you know, you know, a, a, a group dating too. Um, it is on a surface level. It is devoid of the romantic pieces. Mm -hmm. The special dating is that both of you, um, you know, go on, you know, maybe like, probably go out together. Um, by yourself, but it, it 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 doesn't necessarily reach that place of you know of deep romance yet. And when I'm saying romance, I'm not talking about compromising God the principle. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> All right. So let us be clear about that. And then when you come, when you talk about um, steady dating, now that is when um, the the couple say, "All right, nobody else. It's I'm not interested in nobody else. Yeah. I am." Absolutely um, focused now. I'm singled out and I'm exclusive at this point. Um, you you had those experiences. You want to talk about that? <laughs> um, in terms of being exclusive, um, yeah. we did have that um, trial period where, well, I had I don't know about him, but I had that trial period where, as I said, I was church hopping. Yes. So I was looking. I we um when we met i i didn't he i found him good looking i found him attractive mm -hmm. um I, I i made it my point to associate myself not only with him but his friends his friends yeah mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. to kind of yeah. to kind of get to know him more um i a couple times i would ask um I don't think she'll mind me saying her name. Nicole. Um, like I, I, even, I went to her and I said, yes. what was his past relationships like? And she wow. kind of goes... So you were researching, yes. She's mm -hmm. like, ask him. And I was like, no, I can't do that. Because then he might not tell me the truth. She's like, here's his Facebook. Okay. She's like, you can find out a lot about a person through their <laughs> Facebook. Because yes. our young people are posting everything they do in their daily lives yeah. on social media. Yeah, it's true. Um, mm -hmm. So I went, I sat down, I went through his Facebook. I mm -hmm. literally went through every okay. single okay. picture. So you Some persons it. are uncomfortable with this. Some person might be hearing this and they are very yeah. uncomfortable with this, right? I basically but, but, became but, but speak. A, yeah. a stalker, right? <laughs> uh, in a good way, because I wasn't doing it for a bad purpose. <laughs> I was trying to find out more about yeah. him mm -hmm. to avoid that. Because in yeah. the past, when I asked guys about their past relationships, oh, they were fine. That's it. You wouldn't get a guy to, to go into detail, well, I broke up with this girl because I didn't like the way she cooked or I didn't like yeah. the way she walked yeah. or she wow. laughed funny. A guy would not come out and say those things to you. Yeah, wow. Right? So I thought, okay, he must post stuff on Facebook, so I'm going to go look on Facebook and see what I can find. Yes. Um, after looking and hearing from what people were saying about him, I'm like, oh, maybe he is a good guy. Yeah, seems okay, yes? Yeah, he seems okay. He's a good guy, he's a good guy, um, yes. From what I, what I saw <laughs> in church, he was devoted to Christ. And yes. that's one thing that hit it off for me instantly. If seeing his dedication yeah. to, to church and to Christ and to his ministry was my biggest check mark. If I didn't check every single bo mm -hmm. box, that was what um, I knew he wasn't going to drag me out of the church, but I knew he was wow. going to pull me deeper and challenge me to deepen my walk with Christ. Amen. Praise God. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I can find, God, if I yeah. can notice that, I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe this is. And a lot of people were telling me um, when I was younger, oh, you have to, you have to wait. This is, wait on God to show you the right person. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be the most silliest thing <laughs> ever. God's not going to come and say, you know what? Gareth is sitting in the third row at Scarborough Church on the side where the communion table is. God's not going to do that. If I sit there and I wait, waited on God, I would have never met him. Mm -hmm. God doesn't expect us to say, okay, God, I'm looking for Mr. Right. And just sit there. <laughs> yeah, Gareth's not going to drop right beside me as... Davina said, right? We have to work for it. Yeah. We have to go out and look. And then 
be actively praying, like, God, I'm going into this. Show me. Help me to decide if Gareth is the one. I tested God, and I put him out there and said, listen, I'm putting myself out there. You need to wow. show up and protect me, because if I get hurt, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not going through it again. Wow. So if you want Garrett to, if I feel like Garrett's the one, you need to prove to me that he's the one. Show me. Help help him reveal himself to me, his true self, not yeah. that side where he shows everybody yeah. else. I want to see that side where he's mm -hmm. vulnerable. Yeah. And not only vulnerable, but vulnerable for you. Yeah, man. Praise right? God. Yes. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm hearing some, some real stuff. Because what I'm, um, and of course you're confirming some beliefs that I have. One of the th one of the beliefs that you are confirming with me is that uh, it's important to observe before you converge. Mm -hmm. Observe before you converge. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about observe, you know, take in that time or to observe the individual in different setting before you make that initial, you know, um, um, contact, and then you share your. Your, your ultimate interest, so to speak, right? I'm, I'm hearing that. Yes. Am I correct about that? Yes. All right, the second thing I'm also hearing, church hopping is okay. <laughs> I feel it's okay to work. <laughs> <laughs> church hopping is okay. That's what we are saying. Yes, but not mm -hmm. moving your membership. Your, your, your membership is at your one church. But yes. It's okay to visit, <laughs> visit other churches and look. Yes. Because I feel like, if I'm looking for somebody in the church that I grew up in, those those are like my brothers and my sisters. I see them as my family. And I I feel like it's more awkward in the sense where, uh, let, let's say, for example, we were at the same church. Yeah. We grew up knew, knowing each other, being best of friends, knowing everything about each other. And then we date. And then something happens, and we break up. Mm -hmm. Then I find that puts a, mm -hmm. a division between us because now our group that we used to hang out with splits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I don't want to hang out with you because you're mm -hmm. hanging out with Garrett. Sometimes, or, sometimes that works. Um, to be honest, um, sometimes that works in terms of what you're saying. But the other aspect of it is also true, right? Because sometimes individuals, because they grow up together in the context of their home church, right? So they know almost everything about each other. And so many individuals are more inclined and more comfortable in terms of marrying somebody in that context. But sometimes, you know, in our local churches, we don't have individuals who we are, so to speak, compatible with, you know, based on the dynamics of the interactions that we have over a period of time, right? Or over many, many years, right? And so it's okay, I'm hearing, to, 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 to go and visit another church and, <laughs> and take yourself out of the comfort zone. <laughs> if you have offices, if, if you have offices at the church, sometimes you can ask somebody to, 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 to fulfill certain responsibilities or you take time out, take a break, and visit somewhere else. And that doesn't mean that you're going to leave your local church, right? But you are visiting because you want to take care of this aspect of your life. Because remember, we are talking about this in light of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, where God says it's not good for man to be alone, right? And when he says it's not good for man to be alone, God is saying that God created us as social beings to be a part of different relationships, especially meaningful relationships, right? And, and, and so it makes sense to, to, to church hop from time to time. You were going to say something? Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to pick um, something that she mentioned about looking for somebody who will help her grow um, in her spiritual walk. And I think that is um, like a key point. Um, I think it's important to find somebody who is of similar faith. And, and that person will help you grow spiritually as well and not drag you out. Because some people, sometimes we um thinking, okay, we're trying to find a spouse and we're trying to find someone within our church. But that person might be on their way out, <laughs> right? <Wow. laughs> and so you want to mm -hmm. find somebody who is committed um, to God and committed to whatever ministries they are involved in and to help you, um, encourage you grow in your um, walk with Christ as well. And I think in general, you just want somebody yeah. who's open in all aspects of their life to grow. 
yeah. um, whether that's educational, physically, health wise, whatever you want that person who is open because you're thinking about somebody who is going to be your life partner. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. you get committed to somebody and then you realize that they don't want to grow. <laughs> I, <laughs> they yeah. just want to stay the way you found them. And that can be frustrating if you're a person who is like, interested in growing and evolving as a person mm -hmm. so 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 you're speaking to the whole idea of you know um character qualities are qualities that we should look for in a potential um individual that that's a, that's what you're saying and yeah. those are you know very very powerful and of course and i like the balance we can explore it a little bit more like the balance because you you didn't just talk about spirituality because as some persons i'm not saying that you right but there are some persons in the church, as long as the person is spiritual, that's it. But that's not enough. Because a person can be spiritual, but they still have some personality issue. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. You, you want to say something on that? No, I was saying, yeah, that's mm -hmm. 100% true. Because um, you can have people who are... Take, for example, you have people who are so brilliant educationally. Mm -hmm. right they are smart they are they could they could run a whole business by themselves yeah but they cannot communicate with Effect. someone yeah they cannot communicate effectively mm -hmm. so someone could be rooted in christ yeah spiritually connected, spiritually connected but still growing yeah but still growing personally as yeah. you know as an individual yes socially trying to you know because um a lot of people, not everybody is socially, you know, aware. Some people are pretty much socially awkward. So, wow. <laughs> wow. So we have, to, we have yeah. to be very careful. We have to be very careful. Right. Not picky, not picky, not but picky, very but much careful. rational, yeah. reasonable, and balanced, you know, we're thinking when it comes on to this whole process, right? Um, the, the, let, me, let me throw this question out there. Um, what, what are some you know, not good reasons, or as Nancy Van Pelt would say, shaky reasons for dating. You want to explore that a little bit? Shaky reasons for dating. Anyone, anyone, I, go I, ahead. I would say, the, like, based on the times that we're living in now is lonely. Being lonely and not having that significant other or mm -hmm. a person that I can talk to. Um, I have friends that are going through this right yeah. now. They're lonely and they're resorting to dating for the whole, the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, they're on multiple dating sites and it's basically they're scheduling, some, some, scheduling someone basically every hour to, to avoid being alone. Wow. And then in the end, they're getting hurt because the person that they're dating is probably Not doing the same yeah. thing at, because they're lonely and and they and they might be hurting other individuals too because the person might be ready for a relationship yeah. but they are not 100 percent ready yet and as a result of that they can end up trifling with the hearts of individuals because the truth is if they're shallow it if it, it may even come to an end so to speak yeah. right yeah mm -hmm. yeah think, any other reason i think peer pressure is is one too you know, because my friend is dating or someone that I know is dating, I think, you know, I should be dating when sometimes we're not even ready to start dating. Mm -hmm. um, so peer pressure is, is one reason. Yeah, definitely. You, you want it? Yeah, I'll say maybe another reason is like for a status or to just have like a trophy wife, trophy husband situation as well, just based on attractiveness or just based on financial. I think those are um like not so good reasons yeah and of course that's exploitation right because i am at a certain position i have a certain kind of status in my life you want to be a part of my circle so that you can feel a deeper sense of security because you are struggling with with insecurity right so 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 so, so definitely definitely that makes sense yeah so we have to be careful yeah just mm -hmm. like how you said also being in a relationship to boost myself boost your self-esteem yeah. To being with someone can help someone say, oh, you know what? I actually feel beautiful yeah. because I'm with that person. Yeah. Or I feel uh, more confident because I'm with someone. Because in past relationships, 
that's what probably contribute to a breakup. Yeah. So now wanting to be in a relationship to try and fix that, or I guess fix myself, or make myself more, I don't know, I guess confident about putting myself out there. Right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. So we have to be careful. And all of that is exploitation, right? And, and of course, you have also the issue of rebound. You, uh, you, you, you want to say something on that? <laughs> yeah, um, I totally forgot about that. But yeah, that is so true. Um, you know, there are times when people, they, they come out of a, a relationship, a bad relationship. Sometimes it wasn't even a good relationship, but it just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And because they were so comfortable in that relationship, they know nothing else but being in a relationship. And sometimes... You need that time to, you know, gather yourself, you know, invest in yourself. But sometimes they just jump into the next yeah. person that walks up to them. And that doesn't work all the time, you know. There are times when, yeah, it might work, but it is never the answer. Because, um, yeah. you know, half the time it doesn't work. Yeah, definitely. I, I yeah. think you Go need um, the time, like whatever relationship you came out of, whether it's good or bad, you need to take the time to reflect and evaluate mm -hmm. and to see what lessons um, you can learn going forward for the next relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's a crucial um, time. You need to yeah, take. peace. Yeah, definitely. All right. Let me ask this final question because um, we, we definitely have to look at a part two. Uh, where yeah, this is concerned because this is really juicy, right? <laughs> it's a juicy discussion, juicy conversation that we are having. Well, let me ask you um, this question. When should a person start or begin dating? Well, what's your perspective on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for me, I think it's when the person is emotionally ready and mature enough to um, begin and have the time, the time to invest into a relationship. Okay, so I'm not hearing um, an age. No. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Alana. Well, <laughs> in terms of, I would say, to develop the, those stages of friendship, as we, as we discussed earlier, to form those friendship bonds, I would say maybe later teen years, like maybe 17, 18, just coming out of high school, mm -hmm. um, being able to develop that I want to say status quo of being able to develop a proper friendship. Yeah. A friendship that will last a lifetime. Um, a lot of uh, my friends I met in my teenage years mm -hmm. um, that some of them I still have contact with today and they're not female. They're male. Mm -hmm. Right? So being able to create that um I guess that bond to create proper, fruitful, yeah. um, that you got my back kind of friendships, mm -hmm. which will help me because when I'm looking for a spouse and I say, you know, you know what, um, Davina, I met Garrett. We, what do you think? Do you think I should? And I find friends will be brutally yeah. honest sometimes yeah. and they're able to, although we may not want to hear it, but they're there through the joy times the good times, the tears, and being able to form those relationships will help me form a better relationship with my spouse when I meet them. Yeah, definitely. And, 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 oh, you want to respond? Um, mm -hmm. The age... <laughs> <laughs> the age is not the most important thing, I believe. Yeah. Um, I believe that, like what Davina said, like maturity... And, you know, being emotionally ready is more important because you can have a 17-year-old a that is mature and emotionally ready to be able to, you know, start to think about the, um, the person who they want to spend the rest of their life with. Yeah. But you can also have someone who's 35 and they're not emotionally ready. Yeah. They're not mature enough yeah. to even invest in that time to spend with someone. So... I wouldn't put an age on it yeah, per se. I agree with that. While I think that age is should be a good age to start thinking about it, I don't believe the age is the most important thing. The the maturity and the emotional um being emotional ready 
and um, having the, the time to yeah. invest into a relationship yeah. is more yeah. important. What, 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 I think I, what, what I think as it relates to this is that teens, you know, you know, especially early teens and mid-teens and whatever, they shouldn't be engaged in steady dating where they are exclusive with others, right? They are exclusive with persons of the opposite sex, right? I think that they should, um, in, my, in, my, in my view, they should be forming friendship and be in groups and, and all of that so that they can develop where their social skills are concerned and develop their personalities and so forth and so on, right? When it comes on to answering this particular question, um, when a person should start dating, I think that the Bible gives a clue because we have to go back to the whole idea of the purpose of dating. Once you're clear about the purpose of dating, right, from a biblical perspective, from a healthy perspective, that can inform when an individual should start dating. And this is what the Bible says. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 that a man should leave mother and father and cleave to his wife. Because remember, the purpose of dating is to get married eventually. Right, and, and in the context of marriage, the Bible is saying a man, it didn't say a boy, a man should leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, which means that there is a transference of, 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 of responsibility. There's a shifting of the priority of relationships now. Right, you're going to take on a home. You're going to take on somebody else's life that you are fully and completely responsible for. Right, and that takes a, a certain level of maturity. So in my conclusion to this point is that a person should start dating when they are in the season of life to get married. The season of life to get married. The season of life to get married, the maturity piece, the financial piece, um, the emotional stability pieces, and, 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 all, and all of those pieces, right? Um, that's my perspective on that. Um, I, I think that we, are, we have to wrap right now because definitely we have to explore part two because we want to talk about, in part two, we want to talk about um, should couples uh, who are dating have curfew as Christians? Curfew. So we want to explore. Eh? Definitely. No, no, we want to explore that. We want to explore that. Um, and we want to explore um, some more. Um, we want to talk about maybe like interracial probably can touch that we probably can touch on what makes a good date um we want to look at you know you, you know should people kiss on and on, on dating and all of those things we want to talk about these things because these things are very very real um from a christian perspective and and of course many individuals can be inspired and encouraged um, so, guys, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Davina Garden for joining us. And, of course, she's representing um, on this panel individuals who are, who, are, who are single at this time. And, of course, I'm a married man at this time. And, of course, we have a couple here on the panel. And, of course, we are so happy for, for you guys for leaving Scarborough Church and joining us. Um, he serves as elder at Scarborough Church. And, of course, she's a professional teacher. Um, and we, we thank you guys for your insights and your involvement um, um, this evening. But we're going to close now and we are looking forward to part two. Thank you very much, um, guys, for joining us, all our listeners and viewers for joining us uh, this evening um, for our wonderful discussion on dating. Look forward to part two as we explore many of those questions, such as should Christians have curfew in in, in, in dating and you know and many many other more many many, many other questions we want to explore so that we all can be encouraged and we can approach this thing from a healthy and a godly way. At this time I'm gonna ask Elder Um Johns to, to pray for us. Um first of all just wanna say thank you for for having us. Um it is always a pleasure coming to Philadelphia. I, I see you guys as um my family. And um, it's always a pleasure to come and join you guys. Okay. Right, let us pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just want to give you thanks, O oh God, for your mighty love and your wonderful grace. Dear God, we just want to thank you for keeping us safely, O oh God. Dear Father, there are a lot of things that are happening in this world right now, but we still serve a mighty God. Dear Lord, as we just discussed about dating, Christian dating, I pray, O oh Lord, that 
the what we spoke about today might be insightful to someone. I pray, oh God, that we can be um, a light to other people and that they can learn from us and we can learn from each other. Dear God, we just want to thank you for just being the wonderful God that you are, the wonderful God that has never given up on us. Dear Lord, as we finish off tonight, I pray, God, that you bring each of every one of us safely home. I pray, Lord, that we will have a wonderful rest of the week and bring us back here Sabbath to have a wonderful Sabbath. This is my prayer in your most holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. And remember, guys, to, to like, to share, and to subscribe. God bless you. Amen.